All right, I'm Jake Lee. I'm the AMI's Propulsion Lead. I'm Aaron Grison, um, and I'm the Structures Lead at Design Build Fly. My name is Kenneth Wiersman. I'm the Chief Aerodynamics Lead. I'm Tristan Gleisch. I'm the Payloads Lead here at the University of Washington Design Build Fly Club. My name is Alex Martin. I'm the Manufacturing Lead for Design Build Fly at the University of Washington. Okay, the Aerodynamics subteam is responsible for determining what the plane looks like and ensuring it has the necessary performance requirements to complete this year's missions. The geometry team, which is more mostly focused on the overall geometry of the aircraft, ensuring what size the wings need to be, angle of incidence for control surfaces, what type of tail we have, versus the performance subteam, which is primarily focused on calculating the numerical values of the plane, such as how long it can fly, what takeoff distance it can maintain, and ensuring it is both statically and dynamically stable. For this year's very unique challenge of having to place a PVC pipe directly on the end of a wing tip, we knew that initially being an incredibly complex aerodynamic challenge to deal with. So our, some of the key work we did was ensuring our vertical stabilizer had sufficient sizing and control authority that it could successfully offset the drag produced by the antenna in flight. The structures team is responsible for designing all the structural parts. So they start from whiteboard drawings and then turn into CAD models, then turn into G-code models or DXF files for laser cutting or machining. After Arrow kind of gives us a general configuration of the plane, we take those numbers on sizing for control surfaces, wing size, wing span, take those numbers and turn them into real parts that can actually be built. Intentionally, we've kind of separated the manufacturing from the rest of the goings on in the club. Um, so it's kind of like its own thing that takes place during our winter quarter. Um, so we go through the design phase in our first quarter during autumn, and then after we finish most of our design, we start actually building some of our aircraft. The reason we kind of separate it out is because it allows us to focus more on design at the beginning and kind of front load that so we can get all the heavy design work done when we need to like turn in our design proposal and all that stuff. And then after that we can start focusing on manufacturing as well and actually prepare for the competition. This year we decided to eliminate the manufacturing sub-team. Um, so instead of having a group of dedicated members that focuses on manufacturing within the team, it's just me that does that. Um, and the reason we did that was to allow members to have more of a sense of ownership over the parts they're creating. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, in autumn they're kind of focused on the design of their parts, and then as they get into winter they get to come into the shop and build those parts as well. So it allows them to see the part through the entire design process all the way from some simple sketches on paper to actually seeing it fly on the final aircraft. I think one of the biggest things that we uh, are doing this year to help us really win is make this plane out of composites. We haven't had a composite plane in a few years and we have never really had a great composite plane and I think this is the year that we're going to do it. So our job basically divided by two parts. One part is the propulsion and the other is the avionics. In the propulsion stage, we design our propulsion system to fulfill our requirements. And in the avionics stage, we design our flight control system, our servo, and how do we control our planes. So at the start of this school year, we will start to talk with Aero about their performance, about, about how we're going to fulfill their requirements to make sure our plane has enough thrust to take off, have enough endurance for this year's mission. And in the later stage, like in the detailed design stage, we will talk to the structures, make sure our parts will be implemented into our planes, like motor mounts and servo mounts. Thanks to our relation with T-Motors, we actually got a custom motor and they ship us very quick and that can fulfill our requirements for beating all the other team because it's superior. Payloads is anything that the plane is carrying, whether that be cargo or mission-specific uh, pieces of equipment. This year, we have three sub-teams within the Payloads team that are focusing on the three different uh, unique missions of this competition. So we're going to be carrying a jamming antenna for one of our missions, and we have to design a mount to do that. We're going to be carrying a quote-unquote electronics package for mission two, which requires not only creating the package, but also a mounts and systems to hold it in place. And then also we have a ground competition, and that is essentially a wing loading test. So I want to say that like we went above and beyond in like almost everything we did. Like this club has very high standards for what is considered a uh, good piece and good work. So I think every team really put in a lot of work to make this turn out great. But one of the ones that really stands out to me, just for the long and uh, difficult process that's been, has been designing the shipping container for our plane. So this year, we have a special competition rule that the plane has to fit within a very tight volume. 
So instead of just going with an easy cardboard or plywood box to achieve this goal, we decided to make a carbon fiber box since that would maximize the volume we could get and uh, just give us a strong box that stands out in competition. And each piece itself actually takes three hours to make, uh, to manufacture in the composite shop. So it's just been a very long process, but in the end, I think we're good.